coming up on The Potter's Touch. God did not promise you that by the time you found your significant other that it would be what you thought it would be. God did not promise you that if you joined this church or that church that it would be what you thought it would be. But I came to tell you this morning that our God is a God of the unexpected. Oh my God, I feel a shout. I'm going to say it again. Our God is a God of the unexpected. So just because life has shocked you doesn't mean it's shocked God. Nothing takes God by surprise. He already knows what's going on in every corner of your life. And he sent me here to tell you, don't worry about it. I got you covered. This is the Potter's time. Hello, family. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our King. I'm Bishop T.D. Jakes, the senior pastor of the Potter's House, and I'm so glad to have an opportunity to be a part of your life and to be in your home and to share this word with you. This is a powerful word that God has put in my heart and in my spirit, and I believe it's going to bless your life. The message is called Run after your destiny. If you've been tied up and tangled betwixt and between, as my grandmother would say, two different ideas. I'm going to give you a clear, absolute word of direction. Run after your destiny. Take a look at this. It's the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 20. Now on the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early while it was yet dark unto the tomb. And she is the stone taken away from the tomb. She runneth therefore and cometh to Simon Peter and to other disciples whom Jesus and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and says unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we know not where they have lain him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and they went toward the tomb. Peter went forth and the other disciple and they went toward the temple and they both ran together. Somebody say that with me. And they both ran together. Say it again. And they both ran together. And the other disciple outran Peter and came first to the tomb. And stooping and looking in, he see of the linen clothes, cloths lying, yet entered he not in. Simon Peter therefore also cometh, following him, and entered into the tomb, and he beholdeth the linen cloths lying, and the napkin that was upon his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then entered in, therefore, the other disciple also, who came first to the tomb, and he saw and believe. Somebody shout amen. amen. I want to talk from the subject, run after your destiny. Run after your destiny. Touch your neighbor and say, run after your destiny. Do not stroll, do not walk, do not meander, do not wander, but roll after your destiny. The women have gone down to the tomb to add respect and homage to their leader. They, they did not go down to the tomb expecting him to be resurrected. That is a religious privilege that you have ascribed to this text because you understand the outcome. They were not coming down to the tomb expecting the stone to be rolled away because quite frankly, if they would have known that Jesus was going to be raised from the dead, they probably would have never left. Who would leave the tomb? if you were expecting him to get back up again? Who would walk away and hide themselves up behind closed doors and be afraid to come out if you thought the master was gonna crescendo after three days and come out of the grave? It was not the magnitude of, of their commitment to faith, it was their love for the person that brings them down to the tomb with their frankincense and myrrh and their burial incenses just to aromatize that which smells. Because there are some places in life that smell. And the women have come down to the tomb, no doubt with heavy hearts and tear-stained faces to memorialize the master. The master is gone. And there are some glorious people, glorious people, 
whose love is not so fickle that the love faints when the conditions change. There are a few people, a minority if you please, who are impassioned even when it's painful. Anybody can love you when you're up. Anybody can love you when you just got a promotion. Anybody can love you when you just bought a yacht. But when everybody turns against you and all hell breaks loose and it looks like you're not a winner and it looks like the love doesn't pay, most people make a withdrawal when they don't see a benefit. I wonder, I can't help but wonder in my mind, where were the 5,000 with the two fish and five loaves of bread? They didn't make the crucifixion or the graveside service. They didn't come to bring memorials. And where was the woman with the issue of blood? The woman at the well. Where, where were they? Where was blind Bartimaeus? Where was Lazarus? Isn't it amazing how you can pour yourself into people who do not pour themselves into you? That you can, you can give yourself to people who will suck up all they can get. And the moment it doesn't look advantageous, they will all walk away. But the Bible says that love endures all things. Love, I mean real love, not, 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 not infatuation, not puppy love, not, not some, some, some dribbling of emotional expersion, but real, true love. Love is lascivious, it, it gives freely, it's, it's passionate, it's bodacious, and it will give even when you're not winning. It will give when the thrill is gone. It will give when the pulse is weak. It will give when there is no benefit nor advantage. Love just keeps on giving. The 5,000 didn't come. Blind Bartimaeus is not seen. The woman at the well is not there. But here comes just, just a few scragglers. If in your life you have a few people in your whole life, I mean from the cradle to the grave, who, who, who loves you unconditionally, here they come down to the tomb where there was no advantage just to do what I can with a situation I cannot change. Can't you see them coming down to the tomb with heavy hearts and broken spirits going down to the tomb thinking, oh God, we've lost it. We've lost the master. We've lost the master of miracles. We've lost the master of miracles after 400 years of silence. No, no miracles, no prophetic utterances, no decrees, no declarations. And we had 33 years of promise. And now we have lost the master of miracles. Get this myrrh and stuff together. Let's go down to what's left of Jesus. When Mary got down to the tomb, it was a mess. People pay good money to make sure the tombs are decorated and looking nice. It was an absolute mess. The stone had been rolled away. It was disruption at the tomb. He was not there. He was not And I will take this liberty in assuming she was angry because the Bible doesn't tell me how she went down, but it tells me how she came back 
she was running when she came back. Because there are some things in your life that will make you run. There are certain things that will happen in your life that make you pick up the pace. That, that slap you out of your stupor and say, this ain't no time to cry. And you feel like I can't even have good grief without the world going crazy. I can't even have this moment without people. Somebody has stolen Jesus. She thought, they've taken away my Lord, she said, and I know not where they took him. The master of miracles. Don't you remember he had cast demons out of her? He changed my life. And they've taken away my master. And she said, I've got to go get some help. And she goes running to tell and to find Peter and the other disciples. You remember Peter and the other disciple. We've heard those phrases before. We, 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 we hear about Peter and how Jesus had called him and strengthened him and set him apart and taught him to be the rock that his name says that he is and taught him to be unrelenting up under pressure and was teaching him all kinds of things about life. She, she, she comes to get Peter and the other disciple running to the tomb to find him, running to the last seen location of Jesus. As soon as Mary could get to, get to Peter, she was going to tell them somebody's taken away the Lord. And, and walking with him is no longer what I expected. As grieved as I am by him passing away, I'm more upset by him not being there because now life has handed me something that I didn't expect. I'm wondering this morning if there's anybody here that life has handed you something that you didn't expect. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> the one thing I can tell you for sure is that nothing is for sure. <laughs> That's the one thing I can tell you to count on is don't count on anything. <laughs> That, that, that life will often disrupt what you expected. That just as soon as you have it down in a nice, neat little box of how you think it's going to go, and that when I walk down here, this is what is going to happen, by the time you get there, it will never be what you expected it to be. So you got to get used to being a little disappointed. You got to get used to being a little bit shocked. You got to get used to walking into situations and being flexible and adjustable. Because if you are not flexible, you cannot survive. God did not promise you that by the time you got to where you was trying to go, it would be what you thought it would be. God did not promise you that by the time you got the house you were trying to get, it would be what you thought it would be. God did not promise you that by the time you found your significant other, that it would be what you thought it would be. God did not promise you that if you joined this church or that church, that it would be what you thought it would be. But I came to tell you this morning that our God is a God of the unexpected. Oh my God, I feel a shout. I'm going to say it again. Our God is a God of the unexpected. So just because life has shocked you doesn't mean it's shocked God. Nothing takes God by surprise. He already knows what's going on in every corner of your life. And he sent me here to tell you, don't worry about it. I got you covered. <laughs> don't worry about it. I got you covered. You may be shocked, but God's not shocked. Oh, that's a good shouting spot right there. Still to come on The Potter's Touch. Somebody's late, but you made up your mind. I'm going to start running. I didn't get it till I got to this age, but I'm going to start running. I messed up junior high, but now I'm going to start running. I messed up high school, but now I'm going to start running. The moment you get the word, you ought to run. 
the Bible said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. When God gives you a chance at an escape, don't be cute, run after your death. My God, run! Before I die in a cage, I want to run in the wild. We can do what it is without limit, without being boxed in a cage, without being hindered. I want to run in the wild of my destiny. I want to run in the wild of my purpose. Telling us to branch out and it's time to shift and just about taking it to the next level and the, um, just thinking outside of the four walls. I got to get out of this cage. God has given us a place around where we are pastoring to take over that region for the, for the kingdom of God. You're frustrated about something that's just an incubator to take you to the next dimension. Now we're gonna grow and go to global missions. No more limits, no more boundaries. The cage is open. You don't have any excuses anymore on why you can't fulfill your purpose and complete your assignment. To register for this international gathering, visit pastorsandleaders.org or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. God's got you covered. When you don't get what you expect, God's got you covered. When it's a disappointment, God's got you covered. When you walk down and run into a mess, God's got you covered. Can you hear me in the balcony? God's got you covered. Can you hear me on that iPad? God's got you covered. And all of a sudden, life demands that you pick up the pace. Life demands that you pick up the pace. If you don't pick up the pace, you're gonna be left behind. I'm amazed at the people that lack the flexibility to pick up the pace. They just get in a rut, I stroll down here, and I'm gonna stroll back. I'm gonna stroll over here. I'm gonna stroll over there. One of the most amazing things about the disaster at Malaysia is that when it happened, everybody had to pick up the pace. All the news media had to pick up the pace. They were booking night flights and flying over here and flying over there. Somebody had to work overtime, won't be home for three days, typing in the middle of the night, research going on, because when something happens, everybody got to pick up the pace. That's why I can't deal with people who cannot pick up the pace. Don't be strolling when I got a 911 on you. I need people who can pick up the pace. Slap your name and say, pick up the pace. Something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. I came to tell the young people, pick up the pace, pick up the pace, pick up the pace, something is about to happen. My son told me, my son and I were doing a little cookout, spending a little quality time together. He said to me, he said, Daddy, he said, I'm planning to do this, and I'm planning to do that, and I'm planning to do the other, and I'm planning to do this over here, and I'm planning to do this. And when I get out of college, I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to go over here. I'm planning to live over here, and I'm going to do this over here, and I'm going to do that. And then when I get through doing this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that, and do the other. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> and I thought to myself, my God. I'm so excited and I'm so proud because he told me, he said, Daddy, he said, I can't talk to all of my friends about it because he, he said, most of my friends don't want nothing. <laughs> the danger of low expectations. I would rather aim for the stars and not hit them than to not aim at all. I would rather go after it and not get it than not go after it at all. I'd rather try and fail than not try at all. 
I don't want to live with the idea, wonder what would have happened had I done more with my life. I'm going to go for it. Come hell or high water, I'm going after my destiny. Touch your neighbor and say, run! You got to run after your destiny. You can't stroll after your destiny. You can't walk after your destiny. You got to run. Somebody holler, run. You got to run. You got to run. You got to run. You can't just wake up in the morning and let me see what's going to happen today. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to wear. I don't know what I'm going to cook. I don't know where I'm going to go. I just woke up. Oh, you should stay in the bed. Give the day to somebody who's going to run after their destiny. Give the day to somebody who has a plan, who has a strategy, because success is never an accident. And if you don't want it, get out of my way. Because there are some people who want to do something with their life who will run. 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 And run. You gotta run after your destiny. You gotta run after it. You gotta run after your destiny. 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 You gotta run after it. You gotta run. When they gave the young man the scholarship, tears welled up in my eyes. I said, oh God, good. He got a better chance to run after your destiny. Touch your neighbor and say, run after your destiny. Oh my God. And the Lord sent me here to tell you it's running time. It's running time. It's not strolling time. It's not walking time. It's not sightseeing time. It's running time. Touch your neighbor and say running time. You see, if you hear me good, especially young people, if you run after your destiny, you will automatically distance yourself from your history. You understand? If, 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 <laughs> if you just run after what's in front of you, you will escape what's behind you. Don't spend all your time trying to fix what's behind you because you'll never be able to fix what's behind you. You have to run after what's in front of you. Touch your neighbor and say, run. Oh, you're not saying it right. Say, run. They started running. So she got Peter, and she started running. My God, they started running. Peter and the other disciple started running. Somebody's late, but you made up your mind, I'm gonna start running. I didn't get it till I got to this age, but I'm gonna start running. I messed up junior high, but now I'm going to start running. I messed up high school, but now I'm going to start running. The moment you get the word, you ought to run. The Bible said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. When God gives you a chance at an escape, don't be cute. Run after your death. My God, run. Run. Do y'all hear me? Run. Run after your death. Run. Run after it! Run! Don't be ashamed! Run! <laughs> Slap your neighbor and tell him, I'm getting ready to run. I'm getting ready to run. Give me some space because I'm getting ready to run. Get up out of my face because I'm getting ready to run. Don't have time for what you're talking about because I'm getting ready to run. I'm a run! Now, now they're running, they're running, 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 running after their destiny. Touch five people, tell them I'm getting ready to run, getting ready to run, getting ready to run. Getting ready to run, getting ready to run. Get ready, run, 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 run. Gotta run, gotta run, gotta run. Gotta run, gotta run, run, run. Gotta run, gotta run, gotta run. 
Gotta run, I'm running for my life. Gotta run, gotta run. Gotta run, gotta run, gotta run, gotta run. Get a, I'm getting ready to run like I never run before. I'm getting ready to leap like I never leaped before. I'm getting ready to shout like I never shout before. I'm getting ready to dance like I never danced before. I'm getting ready to run. Anybody gonna run with me? Anybody gonna run with me? Anybody gonna run, 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 run? There are some, there are some people who went further than I did because they ran when I was playing. They paid attention in class when I was playing. They were studying when I was partying. You better run! You better run! I'm gonna deputize you to preach. Tell somebody, say, you better run! Lord, I'm out of time, I gotta stop, but I'm so excited about this word. I want you to get this word. I want you to apply it to your life and I want you to use it to overcome the obstacles that come against us all. I'm so glad to have had the opportunity to share the word of the Lord with you. I wanna give a shout out to all of our partners. Thank you for your support. You keep me on television and without you, it would not be possible. And to those of you who enjoy the broadcast, why don't you become a partner with the ministry and help me to run after my destiny as I help you to run after yours. Think about it. Pray about it. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. I'll see you next time right here. Nobody wins the Olympics by mistake. Success is always intentional. It's all been leading up to this moment. It's time for you to run your race. Do not allow the cares of this world to destroy your passion for living, but run after your destiny. With your gift of any size, you'll receive Bishop's message, Run After Your Destiny, on CD from the Run Your Race series. Just visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. How can we be disciples and be standing still? Look at your neighbor and say it's time to run. And when your gift is $75 or more, you'll receive our perpetual calendar with 366 days of hope and guidance from Scripture, as well as the entire four-part series, Run Your Race, on DVD. That includes a bonus message, The Gate is Open, from the Pastors and Leadership Conference. You've got to untangle all of the things that you have been through recently set, start over, reboot, and go to a whole new level. There are times in our lives that we, that we stop running, and we don't even know why we stopped, and sometimes we don't even know when we stopped. Sometimes we don't even know that we stopped. But something can come along and knock the wind out of you and you, you lose your, your stride. But the Lord said, I will restore that that the canker worms and the locusts and the palmer worms ate up. I'm gonna give you your stride back. I'm gonna give you your stretch back. I'm gonna give you your energy back. I want you to make a commitment to run. This is